I'll let Anna tell her story, so I don't want to tell her story, but you have come to a great day in God here today, and you've come to his presence. You've come into his house, and Anna Hawkins, Clark, is, and Simeon, her husband, are, are members here at Change Point, and we just love them. They're just part of us. They're family, and here's an opportunity to family to express um, who God is and what God has done for them on the journey. And, and so, Anna, as she comes, I just want you guys to just grab a hold of every word that she says and every song that she sings because I know that you'll be blessed today and God has a word for you. So, Anna, please come. Welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I can't believe this lady is still here. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> oh, man, I am just so honored um, today by David and Linda and the team and you as a church to have the opportunity to share with you. Um, it's really an amazing thing when a church will, will trust you, when people will trust you. And um, I just want to want to thank you for that first and foremost. Well, I'd like to start off by singing a song um, from my album that I recorded uh, last year in Poland and London. I was very privileged to um, have a God-orchestrated opportunity open up before me over there. And this first song um, is actually an orig- sorry is actually a cover by a band called Ten CC. Is anyone familiar? A little bit. You may be familiar with this song. It sounds quite different. Um, I actually heard it um, from a singer called Sissel. She's um, from Norway. There's a beautiful gospel kind of inspirational message to it. This is I'm Ready to Go Home.
I let your fences fall To surrender, to survive Oh, I will give up everything To those I leave Most of you will know that the theme for Change Point Church this year is Restore the Dream in 2013. And um, I don't know, I'm very excited about that theme. I think it's fantastic and I think it's very much God's heart and what he's saying right now. And so that's going to be the basis of what I'm going to be sharing, sharing with you about. I believe with all my heart that God wants to see the dreams of his people restored and come alive inside of them again and be given freedom. And I can say this because I believe that God is wanting his dream to be restored on the earth. He's wanting to awaken his dream inside of each and every one of us. And he's wanting us to walk and run with the dream that he has given us. Because actually, our dreams are a part of his big dream. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but have you, like, God is a dreamer. Have you thought about that? Like, he's a dreamer, you know? Oh, if there was someone on earth that you would say they have their head in the clouds, it would probably be God. Because he, he dreams He's a dreamer. It all started with him dreaming. Before the beginning of time, he, beginning of time on earth, that is, anyway, he, um, he had us in his heart. He had a dream for a family. He had a dream to create man in his image. And he imagined and he envisioned us, and then he spoke and he breathed us into being. He is a dreamer. And God is really, really big. Do you all agree? He can't be put in a box. He can't be contained. He is a big God. He is multidimensional. He is multifaceted. Okay, so just imagine this big, massive God who is multidimensional, multifaceted. Um, He has a dream. Now, do you think that one person could carry the fullness of God's dream? You can, you can engage if you want. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you think that one person can carry the fullness of God's dream? He's massive. So what I think that he's done is that he has, he has put in each one of us part of his dream, part of an expression of God. 
He has placed his dream inside of us. And that is why it's so important that God would come and restore our dreams. Because in the restoring of our dreams, we're actually, God is, is having his dream restored. You know, God is, he's passionate. He's full of passions and desires and dreams. He, he's not really a God who needs anything. He didn't create us because he, he had need of us. He created us because he had want of us. He had, he had a desire in his heart to have relationship with us, to walk with us. And I think that as his children, if we were to be like him, then we need to reflect him in this. Often I think we can be, um, and this is okay, because we can have, it's good to have, have needs and God will provide for our needs. But I do think that God is also wanting to bring us to a place where we, in right relationship with him, he can open up our dreams and our wants and our desires and our passions. He wants to answer not only our needs and provide for our needs, he wants to answer and provide for our, our desires and our wants, because we are reflecting him in that. You know, when I was preparing for this Sunday, um, the picture that I got uh, was our Father God, our Daddy God, as I like to call him. He was on the edge of his seat, and he's waiting for someone who will believe. He's looking for someone who will dream with him. That was a picture I got. In 2 Chronicles 16.9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. So just imagine with me, okay? Daddy God is sitting on the throne. He is full of anticipation. He's full of hope. And he's looking to and fro. He's scouring the earth and he's looking for a heart that is truly his. He's looking for a heart like David that has a heart after his own heart. He's looking to see if, if they, those people will dream with him. He's looking to see if they will believe in him. He's looking for those who will dare to get outside of their comfort zones and push the limits of what's possible. He's looking for those people, so he can strongly support them. Ha ha, yay! <laughs> so he can strongly support them. I mean, for the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth. Why? So that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. Do you know that God is, is looking to strongly support you? He's looking to see if you would step out so that he can meet you there and strongly support you. He's looking for you to dream because he is wanting to get behind your dreams. And you know, I think about Joshua and Caleb, um, you know, and the Israelites. And all this amazing, incredible stuff had just happened. They'd walked through the Red Sea, they'd been saved, and um, that, you know, they had mana, they had God's presence with them, and it was amazing. I mean, Think about it. If we had like a cloud and fire and mana coming every day, like that would really strengthen my faith, you would think, you know? But God has, has spoken to them of the promised land. And so he tells Moses to send out um, each tribe of Israel. And so he sent out 12 spies into the land to see what it was like. And after 40 days, they came back. They brought back the fruit from the land. But their report was one based out of fear and not belief and faith in God. They said the land is devouring its inhabitants. Like, that doesn't sound good. And, and they were men of great stature and there were giants in the land. And we were like grasshoppers. That's how they viewed themselves. But, it says, but Joshua and Caleb were of a different spirit. They said the land is exceedingly good. Surely God is with us that we may take the land. 
But um, unfortunately, the other report was what spread throughout the Israelites, and they ended up spending the next 40, de- 40 years wandering the desert, and they didn't enter the promised land. And what strikes me about that is that none of them entered the land. I mean, Joshua and Caleb and his descendants entered the land, and, and some of the children. But God had to wait until the next generation. You know, like God was ready. I believe God was ready to strongly support them to take the promised land. He was ready to, for them to be able to step out and conquer and defeat the enemy out there and take what was, what was theirs, what God had declared was theirs. So guys, I just want to encourage you that God is wanting to strongly support you in your dreams. God is wanting to see you flourish. And, you know, I can say that because this is what I've been learning. This is my experience. God is so good. He loves us so much. (sighs) He wants to strongly support us. I have just, I've just recorded an album and it's been amazing. God orchestrated it. I could not do, do it on my own. He made what was impossible possible. He gave me the word on the beginning of, I think, 2012, and he said, yep, this is your time, run, go for it, this is, go to the UK and record an album. And within two weeks, I was set up to go and record an album with an amazing producer in Poland, and a producer that I had written down as somebody who I wanted to work with in London. All because God orchestrated that. And not only that, but he... He provided for everything that I needed. He blessed it. Like, I mean, you know, there was money. There was a lot of risk involved, guys. Like, you know, I was stepping out. Like, it was, it was scary. But he was there every step of the way. He was there. And a lot of stuff was unknown. But, and I didn't, you know, it was like, I don't know, God, where are we going to stay tomorrow night? And um, he would provide a place for us when we were overseas recording my husband and I, and he, money showed up, oh, there's just, there's too much to go into, but I'm telling you guys, he is with you, he is for you, he is behind you, he is ready to strongly support you, okay? Well, um, in pursuing the dream of God in my life, probably the biggest things that have come against me have been discouragement, disappointment, and fear, and um. I don't know, can we, guys, can we relate with that? Yeah. Um, And basically it results in a loss of vision and hope. And like like the scriptures say, without vision the people perish, and hope deterred makes the heart sick, but a a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. So we, we need to get past that stuff. Discouragement is, is a loss of courage. It turns small problems into big ones, really big ones. And for me, anyway, it rendered me powerless and unable to move forward. It, it got me in, a, in a, a position of confusion and indecision. It clouds your vision. It's the enemy of your dreams, and it's the enemy of life in you. In my own journey, what I've learned is that discouragement and disappointment normally comes because of two things. One, we have lost sight of God and taken our eyes off the author, perfecter, and finisher of our faith, and or we have a skewed view of him. And two, we've entertained, believed, or come into agreement with a lie that has caused us to doubt our identity and purpose in God and to have a wrong belief of God's character and nature. Um. You know, when I left school, I, I wanted to pursue singing, so I decided that I wouldn't go to university. And um, in the first year of leaving school, I, I got quite sick. I got glandular fever, and um, I was waitressing and singing and, you know, doing my best and living at home and teaching dance on the side, and I got really sick, and it was a time of just a whole lot of ugh, yucky stuff, like coming up, you know, (laughs) glandular fever will do that to you, (laughs) but um, 
it was a time of you know, like just all these insecurities and and junk really just lies that I believed about God lies that I believed about myself um, coming up and even though I was I was walking with God I loved him you know I was like worshiping him I, I thought that I I was trying to keep my eyes on him but I think actually I may have had my eyes on myself looking inward at my lack, if that makes sense. But I realized that I had a skewed view of God. This is, this is what he showed me. That I actually had a skewed view of God. And um, it was at a time God just started to encounter uh, me and a few other friends with joy. And I actually, I remember this happening when I first got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was just laughing and laughing, laughing. I was about 10 and um, laughing and laughing, laughing. And what was really funny, oh, okay, now I'm on a rabbit's trail. Is that okay? Um, <laughs> what was really funny is that I wasn't meant to be speaking, like nada, no speaking, because I'd had an accident on the motorbike and my brother's um, arm had gone into my voice box and it was bruised and I, c- I couldn't breathe and then I went to the hospital and so I was in hospital and they were putting stuff down and looking at my throat and they told me I couldn't talk. So I was already singing. I was going to be singing a New Zealand Entertainer of the Year. And it was very exciting because I was doing Country Western. And um, this is like the biggest event that you can have in New Zealand. And I'd won overall, so I was in it. And I was ready to go. And they said, you can't sing. You can't talk. Um, and they didn't know what was going to happen to my voice anyway. And so, anyway, so here I am not talking. My mum had um, taken her friend to church. She was having trouble um, in her life. And so I went up the front with them, and there was a minister there, and he just touched me, and he said, the Holy Spirit's all over you. And I fell down, and I was laughing and laughing and laughing. (laughs) I don't know what my mum was thinking. Like, we weren't churchgoers necessarily. I'm just going like, what has happened to my child? This is what I would be doing, but... And so (laughs) I'm not meant to be speaking and I'm laughing. Anyway, long story short, the next day I had another appointment with the ear, nose and throat specialist and um, God had healed me in that experience. So not only had he baptized me in the Holy Spirit, but um, he healed me and the two hematomas that were on my voice box were gone and there was only a little bit of redness and... um, So I don't know why I shared that. I didn't share that this morning, but it's funny, eh? Because you'd think that out of anything that could be heard, it was that. Like, someone's not too happy about me singing, maybe. I don't know. But God, (laughs) haha, he healed me. So anyway, rabbit chow finish. Um, Back to, we were just experiencing God's joy, his love, his pleasure and delight in us. And I was realizing some things within this. Um, You know, I was feeling discouraged and down. Basically, I felt like a failure. I remember feeling like a failure. And um, I remember feeling, I remember him showing me that I actually didn't like myself. And within this laughing, that I actually just didn't like myself. And I felt like I was not good enough. So that meant in my relationship with him, basically, that I was living from a place of trying to gain his approval instead of from a place of understanding that I was his beloved daughter who already had his approval. And um, it was a huge revelation for me to find out that God is happy. (laughs) Like, he's happy. (laughs) Because if we have, and I think this is what's often happened If we have a view, if we have a skewed view of God that he is up there, that he is a harsh taskmaster, or if we we have a a view of him in our heads that he's always got a bit of a scowl on his face, or like myself, I always felt like I knew he loved me. I knew he loved me, but I always felt like I was a disappointment. I always felt like I wasn't good enough. I always felt like I couldn't measure up and that I wasn't worthy. And um, just that he was disappointed in me. And it's just not true. You know, let's just put that in the context. If, you, if you're in your relationship with, say, your husband and your wife or your relationship with your father 
or your mum or your best friend. If, if you had a relationship with them where you felt constantly that that person was disappointed in you all the time, that no matter what you did, that you'd always fall short. It says we all will fall short of the glory, but because of Jesus, actually, we've now been made, we've been redeemed, and we actually now come under, like, sonship. So let's just imagine that, like, it's not a healthy relationship. It's not a healthy relationship. If I, if if I lived with Simeon, my husband, and I always thought that he was disappointed in me, my response would either be like defensive or it'd be like walking on eggshells, like just trying, like just trying to see, like, am I pleasing him? Am I not pleasing him? Am I pleasing him? Am I not pleasing him? And that's not what God, that's not the relationship that God wants us to have with him. I was basically living under an orphan spirit. Um, so during this time, his love and truth had to come into these areas because not only did he have to uproot those lies, those false things that I had believed about himself and about me, but he had to replace it with truth. And what I learned was that he delights over me. I learned that he adored me. (laughs) <laughs> I learned that he celebrated who I was uniquely. I learned that I was a daughter. You know, Jesus, um, when he was baptized, God the Father thought it was a good idea to say publicly over Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And that makes me wonder, if, if God thought it was a good thing to say over Jesus, even though Jesus walked with him daily, don't you think that it's a really vital thing that we hear Daddy God say that over us? That we hear Father God say, this is my son, this is my daughter in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved. I tell you what, it will change your life. It will change your life. I love to hear that when my dad says he's proud of me. Who loves to hear when their dad says they're proud of you? You know, it feels good. Well, our daddy God is proud of us. Our daddy God calls us beloved. He says, this is my son, my daughter, in whom I am well pleased. I also had found that I had a new understanding of the cross through this time. That I was now on the other side of the cross and I was a new creation. I um, remember having one of my first sort of vision encounters and I won't go into all of it, but there was a point um, where Jesus said to me, he said, do you want to see the Father? And I said, yes, please. (laughs) And... um, he took me, we just kind of, we were there, and um, it was like a throne area, and Jesus was standing with me, and there was the cross before me, and then there was the Father on the throne. And I spread my arms out, and I walked through the cross, through Jesus on the cross, and I came out the other side completely different. I came out, I was clothed in royal clothing, and I felt, I was the same age, but I felt this new um, sense of maturity, like I'd come into this kind of fullness or wholeness or maturity, and I felt regal, I felt loved, I felt pure, clean, I was a new creation. And really, we are, we are all new creations. We are now a son, a daughter of the Most High God. We are a prince and princess. You know, understanding who God has declared us to be is so important in the pursuit of our dreams. 
We need to know without a shadow of a doubt that we are sons and daughters. We have been adopted into his family. We have been grafted into the vine. God paid a high price. Jesus paid a high price for that because he just loves us so much. And now we are seated with him in heavenly places. Just like Linda was saying, we are now one with Christ. We, Jesus is in us, and we are in Jesus, and he is in the Father. Like, we are one with him. We are co-heirs with Christ. Because of Jesus, we now inherit the kingdom of God. Woo! We inherit the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy. We are God's temple. Like in the Old Testament, it was the Ark of the Covenant, and God, that's where God's presence was. But, and that was very sacred and very holy. Guys, we are God's temple now. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, lives inside of each one of us. His Holy Spirit dwells in us, so we are now carriers of his presence wherever we go, whatever we're doing. We are princes and princesses in the kingdom of heaven. And our role, essentially, is that of a king and a queen here on earth as his representatives. That changes things, doesn't it? We've been appointed and given authority, restored to us by Jesus, to establish his kingdom on the earth, fulfilling his dream and prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And one final thing that I really want God highlighted to me, so I want to highlight to you, is this whole idea of being appointed by God. Do you know that you have been appointed by God? He's appointed you for this time and place. I mean, just think about it, like, I wasn't born in the 14th century. I wasn't born in India or anywhere else in the world. God decided that it was a good idea for you and me to live here in this day, in this time, in New Zealand at this moment in time. He's appointed us. He's appointed you to a position of authority. He's appointed you as kings and queens, sons and daughters, representatives of him, ministers of his gospel. I think that, re- I think that changes our, the way that we live our life. When we understand that we have been appointed, guys, we have a purpose. It's not a mistake that we're here now. Like, what does he have for us in this day and age? What is he releasing that he has put you on the earth to release through you? What do you have that he is wanting to bring out so that perhaps you can be an expression of his beauty and his glory? Perhaps you're an artist and he wants to express his creativity. You know, I heard someone telling me the other day about someone who loves to bake. They love to bake. And they've been dreaming with God about their baking. So now they pray over their baking that they're dreaming that God, that God can heal someone when they eat one of their muffins. Don't you love that? Like, God is not in a box. Like, ah, so cool. <laughs> In John 15, 16. Just to back that up with a voice, with the verse. (laughs) You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. You know, it's time that we stopped living from our earthly positions and we started living from our heavenly positions. Because Perhaps, you know, you might just see yourself in this demographic, in this um, socioeconomic field, in this box. Perhaps people have put labels on you. Perhaps, you know, you just see yourself at the moment, you're the checkout girl of the supermarket. And you can live from that place. But I believe that God is wanting his people to start to get it through (laughs) them that 
they, are, they have been appointed. It doesn't matter if you're the checkout girl at, at, at the supermarket or the CEO of a big company or a singer or a dancer or an artist or a stay-at-home mum. It doesn't matter. God has appointed you. And just maybe, just maybe, guys, God has inside of you answers, keys for people that are around you. Maybe he's wanting through you to be the the arms of love to people around you, you just wherever you are. Guys, we're all ministers. God has really been speaking to me about this. We're all ministers. Like, it's not just the people up on the stage um, or the leaders of the church. They, They have a certain position. They've chosen to do that for their lives. But we are all ministers of his gospel. He didn't, like, leave any one of us out. We all have a role to play. We all have significance. We all have purpose. Purpose. We have all been appointed. And we're individual, and it might look, the expressions might look different. But guys, if we live, if we live and we carry an awareness of who God says that we are, if we carry like a responsibility of being appointed, we will start to take ownership of what's going on around us like never before. Instead of pointing the finger and going, the world is going down, we will say, I am going to step out and go into all the world and shine my light and make a difference and bring the kingdom of God out there. The more we understand who we are and who God is, the more we will be empowered to change the world. And just finishing now, you know, like Martin Luther King, he said, like, I have a dream. I love it. (laughs) I have a dream that one day, da, 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 da. well, I just kind of get like God saying, like, I have a dream. Guys, I have a dream. It is big. It is huge. I have a dream that heaven would come to earth. I have a dream that there would be a family of God that would love me and serve me wholeheartedly. I have a dream that none would perish. I have a dream that I would have a bride of Christ that is unblemished and pure. And, you know, I have a dream. He has a dream. And just going back to the beginning, guys, he's looking to and fro throughout the earth for someone whose heart is truly his, for someone who has a heart after his own heart, for someone who is willing to dream with him, willing to push the limits of what's possible with him. God is wanting us to catch his dream and carry his dream and he's wanting us to unpack the dreams, the destiny, the passions, the desires of our heart because through that we're going to change the world. I don't know. (laughs) You know, through that we will restore the dream of God to the earth. We will bring his kingdom. Okay. Be encouraged, guys. God is is ready to strongly support you. Well, I'd like to finish with a couple of songs. Um, both of them are originals that I've written. The first is Delicate Flower, and um, I wrote this actually out of a place of feeling a bit down, and um, God just sung this over me, and he encouraged me just to lift up my eyes and see him Because when we see him, we're empowered that we can actually do this. So if if you were related to anything that I I said today, or just in the areas of discouragement and, and just lies and different stuff, just let God sing this over you right now. Holy Spirit, come. Delicate flower, why does your head hang down? Don't you know you were made for love? Beautiful flower, feeling all alone. Don't you know who you are? You Shadowed pictures of your past life 
a pool of confusion Nowhere to go And a voice calls out Come up here Come into the light Where your beauty shines Come up here Let's be seen so much for having me today. Um, this is the, the title song of the album. It's called Journey On. The album actually isn't out until this Friday in shops, so it's kind of exciting. This is like the first time I get to share this with people. It's been over a year in the making, so just thank you for celebrating with me today. And just again, guys, dream with God. Ah, don't hold back. 
Spend time just, just asking Him. Spend time just letting Him love on you and show you who you are. And as He says to me sometimes, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> ba -ba 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 baby.
guys. Uh, just remain standing, if you will, for a moment or two. I'm going to ask Anna uh, to do an encore, and, and I'm going to invite Sue to come up, and Simeon, can you please come as well, please? And w I'd love that encore to be in the form of a prayer, because I think Anna has demonstrated today that she carries something, friends, that we all need. She really does. And what you have seen at work today is, is there's a dynamic at work that that I'd love to see released in all of our lives, in all of our hearts. Because she's reminded us, it's the principle in 1 Peter 4.10 that all of us have a measure of grace. Each of us have a gift. We all have a place in the Father's heart. We all have a part in his dream. Each and every one of us here today. It's, it's being released in her life, her place and her part. I want, to, I want her to pray for us that, that she might... Um, that God might release in us those gifts, that measure of grace that he has given us, that we're able to minister that as she has ministered the grace that God has given her to us today and to others, that we too may be just far more aware of the grace that we carry, that we're able to minister that to one another, but also to a world that needs to be reconnected with the Father's heart and the dream of the Father's heart, faithfully administering or faithfully stewarding the grace and the gift of God. So let that be her encore today, if that's okay, as you stand together and we recognize husband and wife. Yeah. Team. It's amazing, husband. <laughs> Absolutely. And, um, and, then, and then we'll pray for you guys Very as well. Is that cool? Yeah. So you pray for us, we'll pray for you. Is it a good deal? Thank you. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence here today. Yes. Holy Spirit, I, I ask that you would come in a deeper way right now, Lord, yes. and you would rest on each and every person, Lord. Yes, I ask, Holy Spirit and Father God, that you would reveal the love of the Father to each and every person here today. Yes. I ask that you would... Lord, that you would consolidate them in their identity. Yes. Lord, that you would show them who they are in you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, that they yes. would arise, like Isaiah 60, arise, shine, for your yes. light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Yes, Lord. Lord, that they would arise in, you, in the strength of their identity in yes, you, God. Lord. And knowing the Father and in knowing who you say yes, that they God. are. Yes. And Lord, that that they would be released. Yes, I just God. declare just a release upon Thank each you, and Jesus, every person to be uniquely them, yes, Lord. to understand that they have been appointed. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Lord, that they would be free to unpack yes. the dream of God in their lives, yes, that they would be set free, that they would be liberated yes. to express you in a new way, to just... Have your desires come alive inside of them in a new yes, way. God, thank you. And I pray that each and every one of us would be able to catch your dream, God. Yes, Lord. And we'd you. walk with it and run with yes, it Lord. so that we may bring your kingdom on the earth. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for this beautiful woman of God. Father, we thank you that you give us gifts, and she has been a gift to us this morning. Jesus, I ask that you keep drawing her closer to yourself, God. Yes. Father, you do have big dreams for her, and I ask, God, that more than anything, that you would keep drawing her closer to yourself, God, that you keep whispering to her heart, God. Yes, yes keep, just as she dil diligently just improves her craftsmanship, God, but I just see the greater need, God, of her being close to you and you being close to her, God. So thank you for the gift that she's left today, God. Thank you for the way, Holy Spirit, that you've been amongst us, that you've walked amongst our hearts today. Thank you, God, that you've been changing. Thank you, God, you've been stirring. Thank you, God, that you've used this beautiful woman, this gift, 
called Anna and her, an amazing husband to share, God, you this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all, all the glory, all the honour, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Um, Anna's going to be around for a little while, I gather. Uh, there are copies of that CD available this morning from the, the information centre out there, so please feel free to race out there and grab one of those. There'll be someone out there to facilitate that for you. Uh, there is a, a prayer team available for those. Um, what Anna has shared today and, and the way she shared that may have stirred some things in your own heart today, and you just appreciate some prayer support as you, you work through that. So the prayer team's available to you this morning. Uh, there's coffee available as well. God willing, Anna and Simeon will be back tonight as well uh, to share again. So, outstanding.